Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to my Waffle Square, where I obsess about things and you get to benefit from it. I'm about to read your mind. I'm getting the feeling that you have a broken or stripped wheel stud on your child's Razor 170. I know what you're thinking. Mike, are you some sort of mentalist? No, nah, you clicked on this video, so I'm just assuming. All right, I'm going to show you how to remove the old ones, where to find the new ones and replacement uh, flange nuts as well, the lug nuts, how to install them. We're going to torque it down to specs and I hope you enjoy this video. All right, our problem happens to be with the back wheel. So we're going to roll it in, chop the front wheels, jack it up, put a jack stand under it for safety. And now we're going to take either a 9 16th or 14 millimeter bit. It makes no difference with these particular little uh, lug nuts and we're going to remove them. If uh, like in our instance, it was spinning freely because it was so stripped out. You can use one of these panel remover tools and get behind it uh, as you're using the impact gun and that'll help get it off of there. All right. All right, once the wheel's off, you can see the hub here. Now, I like to take the jack and elevate the uh, other tire so that this moves freely. Also keep the emergency brake off. And the reason for that is I want to be able to move it to right to the right spot to get a tool on there to remove these guys. And if it was locked in place with the parking brake or the other tire set down, now you're working around and it might not be comfortable for every angle. So what's the best way of getting these wheel studs off? Well, I looked on YouTube for a couple different videos I saw of other UTVs, and they used basically one of three methods. Uh, I tried all three and only one worked for us. So first I tried putting a C-clamp on here with a socket on the other side. So when you pushed out the wheel stud, it had room to move on the back. Problem I found with that repeatedly was the part of the C-clamp that can pivot uh, kept falling off. So next I tried a little vise that I have. It's like a little bench top removable vise. And I started cinching that guy down and that was pretty stable, but it required more force than that little guy could handle. And as you see here, it actually cracked the head of that poor little vise. So eventually I had to resort to the one I was trying to avoid. Let's set up the camera and I'll show you what we need to do. So to get these wheel studs out, we're going to have to do it the old fashioned way with a hammer. And you've got to beat them like they're owing you money, to quote Tyler Childers. Beating them strings like they're owing me money and chasing that honky tonk flame. And the reason for that is this part here is called the neural. This is like one and a half times, if not double, the length of other wheel studs uh, similar to these. And because there's so much footprint on here, it is really hard to get these out. So maybe even some hearing protection. Now, when it comes time for your choice of hammer, watch out for one that even has the slightest little bit of curve like that one. What I found is that one was just marring it. I got this one that kind of looks like a tomahawk. I don't know how long this has been in the family, but it's got a really nice flat head on it. And you got to stand in a position that makes you comfortable and just start beating on it. So I've got a different camera angle set up so we can see when it starts coming out the back. Here we go. Finally, now we can just rotate it. Oops. All right there, and let's do it again. Here we go. See that coming out? Whew. There's number two. And if your wheel stud is broken, for example, you're going to need a nail punch like this to set there to have enough to pound through and get that stud out. Now on to easier topics. 
Well, next, let's talk about where I got these replacements. Are you ready to have all the time I spent obsessing over this issue pay off for you? We've just taken out these four wheel studs and we need to replace those with these. But where do we get them? All right, check out this slide. So this is not a representation of our wheel stud, but I'm trying to show you all the various measurements that come into play when trying to part out and source the right wheel stud. Now, as you see here, if you go onto Amazon and you type in Polaris Razor 170 wheel stud, the return you get is going to be all kinds of stuff that is not fit for this vehicle. In fact, what I found was most of the wheel studs returns were 3 8 by 24, the thread pattern. But as you can see here, the Razor 170 is actually an M10 by 1.25. Now, I did find one correct listing when I typed in that Amazon search, but you would have no idea uh, if it's the front or the rear, or if there's no difference, you would have no idea what the thread pattern is, what the length, what the measurements, because they don't show any of that stuff in the slide on anything I found in an Amazon listing. Now, while I did end up finding the proper part number for both the front and rear studs, which apparently are different, uh, I would have never found them on Amazon. But if you type in these codes, you can find them on Amazon and I will leave links for them. The uh, front studs are $9.19 each. The rear studs are $8.29 each. My recommendation, however, would be go to go to fixmytoys.com. Check this out. In one minute, you click on there, you do the drop down tabs to your year uh, of your Razor 170, and you type in wheel studs, and you're immediately brought to this page where there's two listings, and they clearly state the part number and if it's the front or the rear. And they're cheaper than the Amazon listing by about a dollar, dollar fifty. So if I were you, I would go there and buy my replacement studs. I will leave a uh, link to fix my toys. They are not a sponsor, uh, but I just think it's a better deal and it'll give you more peace of mind that you're getting the right part. I will say, however, their lug nuts are a lot more expensive. So those are $4.99 each. And what I would recommend is instead you use my Amazon affiliate link to get this set of eight M10 by 1.25 lug nuts. They're called flange nuts. And the only difference is you see here is they are a 15 millimeter socket instead of the 14 for the uh, standard one, but they're so much less expensive. You could just change them all out on the whole vehicle for less than it would cost you to just replace uh, the four. So that that's my recommendation based on all my research of what you should do. And I hope that helps you out a bunch. Of course, you can also just go straight over to Home Depot and pick these up like I did. They're like 60 cents each. So that's another option. All right, we got the first one in, seated really well. Threads are in good shape. So how did I do that? Now, there's too much stuff back here to get a hammer in and hammer it. And I tried putting a socket and a C-clamp and wrenching it closed. That didn't work at all. Instead, we just want to very gently line up the knurls here on the spline with the ones inside of the hub. Now with that one in place, we can take our flange nut, start screwing it on. And let's just tighten this guy into place. And it'll start pulling in. Let go real gentle. And then once it's, once we've got the full thread pattern on there, like that, I want to go a couple more turns and then put a washer on there. Ugh. 
Now, eventually it's going to come to a point where you need a little bit more leverage. So you can use a bar to extend this guy out, a metal bar, or you can grab a uh, closed end wrench like this. You set it on there and that gives you some more leverage. I happen to have a breaker bar, so let's switch over to that. There we go. that all the way seated that's great so i'm not brave enough to use one of these impact wrenches to drive these in because i'm half wondering if that's not how these got stripped out to begin with so let me know if in the comments if you were brave enough and if it worked but for me basic hand tools are getting this job done all right let's take off our nut and our washer two more to go Ugh, last one Now, before you celebrate me too much, I think there's gonna be a collective duh across YouTube when I tell you that a little bit of oil in here makes the job so much easier. So let's switch the camera angle. We'll put the wheel back on and we'll tighten these down and torque them to spec. So the manual says when using flange nuts that you should torque down the wheels to 27 foot pounds. So I dialed in my torque wrench to that setting and we're getting ready to put the wheel back on. But first, that same little clip says also not to lubricate the lug nuts or the wheel studs. So since I used oil to help me get them on, I'm just gonna take some brake cleaner and just clean all that off real quick. So a couple of the videos I watched on YouTube said that these OEM wheel studs are pretty soft metal, so I'm gonna forego any impact wrench and do everything by hand. Here we go, 27 pounds. Well, that's not much. There we go. So if you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the YouTube algorithm to start suggesting it to more people. Also, please consider subscribing. I work really hard to put out good quality content and there's more videos to come. I'll leave links to everything we talked about as I discussed in the video down in the description below. Full disclosure, again, those are Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on them and end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing, but I do get a small reward at the end of the month. It helps to justify the time it takes to make these videos. Until next time, thank you for watching.